had a little cry. <laughs> People come into your lives and you wonder at times what's going on, but uh, when somebody has uh, a part in your life which is joined to the Lord Jesus Christ as well and the calling upon your life, it's quite difficult when, when things go wrong. I mean, I can see Alan Murray on the street corner now with his jacket on. He that hath the sun hath life. And on the back, he that hath not the sun hath not life. And warning people that the next corner they turn, they might walk into hell. And praying and fasting was his way of life. And I remember the first sermon he ever preached. The refining of the silver in Green Lane. But he missed it. Or did he miss it? Did he have to go the way he went? And I believe he, he did have to go that way. Because it was what he chose. And sometimes, you, you, you know, we choose things and it's not right. But God allows us to choose, doesn't he? And sometimes we gain a, a big mess, but uh, we can praise the Lord. He never leaves us, and he never forsakes us. But in life, it, it, it's, uh, it's quite a lesson. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Must be a wonderful experience. To cease from sin. Even in little ways. I remember when I got saved. And we used to worship in the Quapalum when it rode. Uh, and as soon as they sang about the cross or the blood. I would cry openly. Weep in the meeting. Every Sunday morning. For 12 months. They put me in the Sunday school. Checking the little kids. I had a little puppet. And... Uh, but at the, towards the end of the meeting when they'd close in prayer and they'd sing the last hymn and they'd sing and, and I'd, I'd have to stand there and cry in front of the little kids and they'd look at me like that, you know. But um, when you're on your way to a pub and you end up in church and you get saved uh, and you get baptised in water and you get filled with the Holy Spirit before nine o'clock and you went to chapel past six, you know, God's involved in your life, you know. And it doesn't matter what comes. There is always a way through. But sometimes it's hard. We must never take his eyes off the Lord. We can never think that, yeah, we've got the job weighed up now. We know where we're going and what we're doing. No. Every day is a new day. Every day is the challenge. But the challenge, you can be an overcomer in the challenge. Because he overcomes in us. And this is what Alan's going to learn now. After all those years. In Philippians, in the Bible, it talks about the fellowship of his sufferings. We asked, why do the righteous suffer? I suppose some of us know a lot about suffering. In the family, different situations that we've experienced in life. Why has the whole world from the beginning of time been filled with the groans of suffering? And it grows greater by the day. We can see it, but we know the answer to it all. It's very important to understand the mystery of suffering. Why do the wicked prosper while the righteous suffer? We ourselves know better than any also of its origin. We spoke a little bit about it last week. But we need to know its purpose. If we don't know the purpose of suffering, we're going to miss out on a lot of power in our lives. We're going to miss out on a lot of blessing in our lives because God moves and works in this way. In 1 Peter 5, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So God speaks to you. What does he say? Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Be gone, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, you can't 
you can't just go around any, any time and any place you want to and go through the, the, the sick list and everything else. But you can begin to walk. You can begin to approach. You can begin to get into a place where he is for you and nothing can be against you. But you can know that only by experience. But the experience is there for you and me. He'll come. He'll give you the bad cold. He'll give you the bad head. He'll give you all sorts of things to keep you away from the things of God. To keep you away from the Bible study and the prayer meeting and the, the general meeting. But if you will honor him, he will honor you, and you will be strong and overcoming in the things of this world. The same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren. The devil is allowed in God's presence, trying to get permission to devour us. The Lord whom we loveth, he chasteneth, chasteneth us, to receive us. He's got a plan and a purpose for it all. He knows how to strengthen you in the inner man. He knows how to lead you in your life so that you will come across this situation and that situation. You, you will learn his ways and you will be an overcomer in his ways. You know, the devil always has to get permission before he can touch your life. So if he's touching your life in any way whatsoever, you can go to him. And he might not tell you what's going on right away. But sooner or later, as you walk with him, he will walk with you. And he will show you what's going on in this life. And he will make you more, I said more, than an overcomer. You cannot read the Bible and see anything different. If you are a spirit-filled Christian... You must see the purpose of God in your life, in all things. All things. But don't we see time after time the Christian being the victor and not his enemy? No. Because he stays in faith. I remember doing five days without a bite to eat. Working at the same time. Nearly killed myself with the job I was doing. At the end of the week... I fell against the wall, the pain was still there, slipped down to the floor, crying, and I said, I'll just go and ask you one more time. Is there anything you can do? I've never seen it since. Hallelujah. Never seen it since. <clears throat> He'll take us as far as we'll go with him. He'll try us as much as he can. He'll test us. He wants to perfect you. He's got a job for you through all eternity. Age unto age unto age. He's going to work with you and you're going to work for him. And there's going to be nothing in your life that needs attention. Nothing that you need renewing, mending or sorting out because you will have passed through and you will have suffered with him and you will know who he is in every way. And you will serve him. You will serve him. If we remain ignorant of the eternal purposes of God, we will always remain ignorant of the eternal blessings of God. Even in our suffering. Now, it's easy for me to say, oh, I'm pretty fine, pretty healthy, and all the rest of it. I look upon my brother, and he's going through all that he's going through, and yourself, and, and what are you waiting for? The waiting for an operation. This is happening, that's happening. God's got a purpose. God never faints. He's always there. Ready to help us. In this life. Since we were born again, he has been with us. We have been with him. He has promised never to leave us. Sometimes... The Son of God was born down here among us so he could experience our life. And know why we don't want to do this or do that or why we complain about something else. But the work he has started, he has promised to finish. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And it's marvelous what he can do if we'll just go to him. If we'll just trust him. If we'll just go the extra mile. If we'll just go that extra uh, effort. 
If we will just make our minds up to go and pray and to seek his face for a little while, he'll make all the difference. It might not be five minutes after, but it will come because it's promised. It's promised. He wants to conform us to his image. Oh, what an image. What a beautiful saviour we have. How marvellous it is to know the fullness of his life in the Bible. Don't ever stoop so low as to think that his only intention is to take you to heaven, give you a harp, and for you to sit in the corner and shout hallelujah. Don't ever think that that's all that's going to happen. No, 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 no. If that was the case, there would be little purpose in suffering at all. There's got to be something that we learn from everything. My brother doesn't like me. Oh, is that right? Love him. <laughs> Get the victory. They said this about me. So what? Have you any idea what they said about me? Get over it. Be strong in the power of the Spirit. Be confident in the power of the Spirit. Be expecting in the power of the Spirit. Be bold in the power of the Spirit. And you will experience, you will experience the purpose of all things in your life. The challenge, the test, the outcome. Don't miss it. Don't miss any and every chance for him to have a a greater purpose in your life. God has a mighty plan, a master plan, not to kill you, but to kill all in you that must die. Every bit of unbelief must die. If we want the best, if we want the highest, and he wants it for us. He wants it for us. A mighty plan. A plan of restitution, restoration. It involves you and me through trial. Through temptation. The truth is, we are being tested for the future. This life is so short. So very, very short. You can look back and see it. The, the, the days seem to go Nowhere at all now we turn around and say, is, is it Saturday again? Is it Thursday, the prayer meeting again? Is it Monday, the Bible study again? It seems to pass so quickly. He's got a plan for his church, which will come through obedience, but it will lead to perfection in him. The wisdom, the understanding, the fullness of Christ in you. Because you are going to minister into people's lives when the time comes. And you need the beauty of Christ in you. You need the mind of Christ in you. You get it when you read his word. The beauty of justice. The total use of power. The omnipotence of power. You must have the same knowledge. You must have the same mind if you are going to represent him. That's why his word is what it is when we go on the street. It's a power. It's a force. It's a deliverance. It's the answer to life over death for all the people who we meet and speak of. His salvation and the gift of it to them. We can carry out the will of God in our lives if we so choose. And you can't say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll choose today and then I'll have a rest tomorrow. But when he comes and asks you and encourages you and shows you that you can make a choice, be sure to make the right one. Because that's where the blessing is. Never miss an opportunity to witness. Oh, I've missed many. And I've gone home and I've been so sad. But then again, I've taken many. 
And it's been so exciting when they've wanted to know more and, and so on. And they're, they're, you, you, you sing in a little chorus and they say, well, what's this song you're singing? Oh, it's because I'm saved. Saved? What, what, what do you mean, saved? <laughs> Can I be saved? <laughs> Shall I play for you? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful serving the Lord. The big fella come up. I thought I'd go to Chester. I went early. And I'm on the street. There's not many around. And I'm on the corner with my tractor. The big fella runs up. And he says, there is no God. I said, oh, I said, brought me here this morning. He said, there is no God. I said, he's right here now. He said, there is no God. I said, let me pray for you and you'll meet him. He ran off. <laughs> he ran away. Honest, he ran away. It happens all the time. I don't need one of those. You need one more than anybody else. It comes upon you. He comes upon you. The policeman said, oh, what are you doing here? I said, the Lord sent me. He said, how long are you staying? I said, till he tells me to go. He said, don't be giving one of them to anybody who doesn't want me. I said, I don't do that. Now then, this is the gospel and this is yours. And he was gone as well. <laughs> He'll use you. He'll bless you. He'll make you strong. He'll make you powerful. He'll make you an overcomer. I don't care who you think you are. What God says you are is a different thing altogether. And it's, it's exciting. Yeah. We don't always want to be involved in it. No. And you can go feeling, oh, dear me again, you know. But when you, sometimes when you get there, he's waiting for you, you know. <laughs> and then other times you have a bad day. Don't you, Bob? <laughs> Nothing seems to go right. Nobody wants a track. They'll tell you they, they don't care if they do go to hell. And that makes it even sadder. Especially when the young ones tell you. But this is a dangerous day in which we're living in. It's a day that we have the answer for, nevertheless. You are the answer for this day in which we're living in. And he wants to be the answer in you so you can be the answer in the others. I can see him now with 12 kids sat around him. 12 kids listening to what he's saying. Sat on the floor in St. Helens while he's telling them about Jesus and the cross. And then a person can lose his way. A person can lose his way. It's your choice sometimes that causes that loss. We have to be careful. Suffering and tribulation becomes a meaning in our life when we experience it. He is all-powerful. But he's working for a great company of sons. Those who have been a priest, he wants to make them a king also. To rule and reign in God's kingdom. This is what the Bible teaches. And we cannot take our carnality with us. We have to leave it behind. No lack of God's love in our hearts. We've got to try harder. And it's hard when you're brought up without a mum and you go out in life and you please yourself what you want to do. You get in all kinds of trouble. Trouble's your best friend. Uh, it's just crazy life you're living. And then all of a sudden, you, you, it comes into your life. You're a born again Christian and this is what you've got to do. Well, how do I do that? I never had that experience early on. I don't know what to do, but he'll teach you. But it's a still, small voice. The devil's coming, shouting all the time. But it's a still, small voice. This is how you do it. <laughs> Overcome the flesh and say you're sorry. <laughs> it's amazing. Simple little ways. But he doesn't want any lack of love in our hearts. But with justice shall they judge the meek of the earth. And with Christ shall they rule the nations. Until all is everywhere subdued unto him and under him. He's got a marvellous plan and a purpose. He will fill all things. Only Christ could do that because he's the author and the, the maker of all things. He, 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 I mean, he just speaks, don't he, and things take place. He, he, 
We're such privileged people this morning to be here. Not to hear me, but to hear him speaking into your spirit, speaking into your life, and telling you that he's got a purpose that, that you can walk into the minute you get through them doors after listening to his word this morning. Oh, if we only knew. And I say that to myself also. Christ shall present his church a perfect kingdom and family to his father. And he'll be able to trust every one of them because you've come through, you've been refined, you've realized your mistakes, you've put them right. You've never let them go, but you've put them right. You've walked with him, you've talked with him, and you've been able to help others. You've been a light in a dark world. You've been a strength in weakness, and it's all around us, and it's going to get much, much worse. But we have an answer. We have an anchor. We have a helper who is God himself. All we need to do is walk with him. Blessed saints he's looking for. All the celestial universe, which everywhere at this moment is a chaotic, rock-strewn wilderness. It's just a waste. Not one planet near or far shall be left out, but it will all come under his restoration when we have a, 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 a time when God will, will once again look upon all things and all is good. He's got a purpose. He's got a plan. Eternity itself shall not be too long for God's mighty program. It's hardly started yet, really. When you read, the, you know, some of them scriptures in the corner in Job and out the, out the corner in Ezekiel and, and Jeremiah and all that. And it, it's amazing what you can come across. And it's it just King David, Psalm 8. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? When I consider Colin Powell, the head the ball, the, 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 the junkie, the, 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 the fighter, the motorbike man, 140 miles an hour, and he was happy. When I consider what you've done in his life, we can walk with him. We can trust him because there is the evidence of a life that was lost and is now found. And we've got husbands and wives and kids. Pray for them, but pray with the expectation. Pray with the determination. Pray and say, get out of here, Satan. Leave my grandkids alone. We've got to go there. We've got to do it because nobody else will. And we can because of what he's done for us. But I'm not going to say, well, he's a big devil, you know, he's set to man. He's already defeated, isn't he? He's already defeated. When you think of that girl there who needs a new whip, and, and, and she goes uptown and she's rubbing along there and, and she's giving out all the tracks and I'll watch you, you know, I'll watch you. And, and I, I mean, she started up and said, oh, I can't do that. And now she's, she's up there at the front. Come on, you lot. <laughs> We've got things to do. And we have. All of us. Got something to do. The son of man that thou visitest him. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so glad he came into my life, aren't you? 12 months, she was telling me. Jesus lived in her heart. What do you mean? Oh, get, well, I'm going pub. I'm going rugby. I'm going for a ride up bike. What do you mean Jesus lived in your heart? But that night I went to that meeting. Oh, he came into my heart. Oh, isn't it wonderful? What can happen? Oh, the lady comes and says, what's all these songs you're singing? I'm fixing a new toilet break. Here you go. And I said, oh, it's all about Jesus. And she said, do you think Jesus can help me? She was going through a divorce. I didn't know. And we prayed together there, kneeling in the tools and the muck and the grime and the old toilet and the basin and all the rest of it. You never know. You never know what's going on. But be ready to speak for him. Be ready to stand for him. Be ready to represent him. Be ready to come here and lift your hands up and worship and praise him because he's waiting for you. He waits for you. Never mind anybody else. He waits for you. It's not to angels only that God has assigned the sovereignty of the coming world of which we speak. But as we know, in the Psalms, 
it is exclaimed. How poor a creature is man, and yet thou dost remember him. And a son of man, yet thou dost come to him. That's our experience. He's come to us. It's marvellous, isn't it? Why, why you? Why me? I don't know. Thou hast made him a little while. For a little while, lower than the angels. For a little while. That means I, I, I'm going to be something greater one day. <laughs> this is the, 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 you know, just the, the run out, see? That's our experience. Thou hast made him for a short time, lower than the angels. We're given the gift of salvation. With glory and honor, thou hast crowned him, and hast set him over the work of thy hands. You know, all these people, they don't mind, do they? They, uh, they'll use the world, they get on a plane and up over there and up over there, swim in the sea and walk in the woods and, and do all the things and all that. They, they don't mind using everything he's made and provided, but they don't want anything to do with him. Do they? And they, they, they don't realize what they're doing. But we didn't either, did we? Until he, he revealed himself to us. And when we come to the prayer meeting and we pray and, and, and when, we, 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 when, we, when we can get nearer, uh, and deeper, and when we can get stronger, and that you, when you've been to the prayer meeting and you go home, you know you've been in the prayer of God sometimes. You know that he's heard you sometimes. And it gets exciting, it gets challenging. Because he's making a people for his own name's sake. Thou hast put everything in subjection under his feet. For this subjection of the universe to man implies the leaving nothing not subject to him. What needs subjecting to him in your life? Okay, leave it at that. But I'm just saying, as you walk out of here today and you go into tomorrow and through the week, what needs to come under subjection from your life unto him? You know, friends, one day in the future, we are going where nobody else has ever gone before. And we won't need a spaceship. No, sir. No, sir. Past the promise of God's word. I, 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 can you ever, can you begin to understand that? Realize it. Past the promise of God's word. Into the reality of it. The making of it. The doing of it. it, it it's marvelous, you know. Into its fulfillment. In faith believing. Do you know what that is? It's a high calling. In faith believing. It's a high calling. It's given to you. It's given to me. Don't go down, but go high in your calling. It's, it's never been seen, never been known before. We can't stop now. We don't want to, but it'll get tougher. So we enter in more. We get closer. We get nearer to one another. In word and deed and love and compassion and grace. And we find these things in God. By faith, you will have to put on your priestly garments, draw near to God. That's what he wants for you. We're in an in-between time. We're in a trying time, a testing time, a preparing time, a making time in God's time. By faith, you can walk into God's kingdom. It's already prepared for you with your calling, with your choosing. Because in Christ Jesus, you are already royal blood. You're already chosen and called. You're a peculiar treasure to him. We know that by looking at one another now and then, like, but, you, you know, I mean, we're special. You're special. Yes. We do ourselves down sometimes. It's the priest's duty to draw near to God. Do it. Do it. I went to a Meet him once, and, uh, and Lynn went, went out for prayer when she had this noise in red. Still got it. And, uh, and uh, the man come and said, uh, right, he said, he, said to, he said, where's your husband? And she said, he's there. He said, you come here. He said, you stand there, he said. I want you to pray also. He said, you are the priest in this household. And when, when you're reminded of it, you, you can feel the importance of it. Who you've got to be. And why? And what for? And, and then you can walk in it. And you can talk in it. And you can draw near to God and do it. You really can. It takes 
your deciding. God is not in a separated position, a ministry now. His law is not written on cold tablets of stone. But by his spirit, he is in you by a new covenant. Jesus never suggested to his disciples, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He commanded them. He commanded them. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I'm the most blessed amongst you. And I know it. I went into that church a sinner. And I come out of that, that water, that baptism water, and I could praise him and sing and pray. And I, I'd never been taught that. Never seen it. It was put into me. Oh. Why me? Because I'll tell others. Perhaps he knew that. Yeah, I'll have that Kinsey fella. He'll tell a few. Yeah. And it's the same with you. My sister, my brother. He calls us. He wants us to enter in to the things he's got for us. Because he's got a lot of things for us. Don't miss them. Wait upon the Lord. And then when you come to meeting, be ready. Because he wants to speak through you. He wants you to be the highest with your hands. He wants you to be the loudest with your clap. He wants you to be the loudest with your hallelujah. But it's got to be in him. Excuse me. Only in him. But when it's in him, oh, it goes into everybody else. You see? Doesn't it? By the power of his presence. By the power of his spirit. He's a great God. He's a great saviour. No, God never gave suggestions to his people. He gave commandments. He said to Moses, make sure you follow the pattern when he was building the temple because it, it's the replica of something in heaven. And oh, the depth of that is it tremendous. Tremendous. A covenanted people and a kingdom of priests. That's God's everlasting order. It's an order Jesus established after Calvary in its fullness to his disciples. I will pray the Father, and the Father will give you another comforter. And when he, the Spirit of truth, will come, he will guide you into all truth. Not your truth, not my truth, not that fella on the telly. No, as good as some of them are. No, his truth. And his truth overrules, overrides, and fits everybody else's truth into the right place. So you kick the error out, and you get the real thing, you see, if that's necessary or possible. There's a lot of truth out there, but the witness of the Spirit will show you the real truth. There's a lot of people having a go. They tell you all sorts of things. You've got to make sure it's the still small one. The still small one is the best one. Every time. Every time. He will show you things to come. There was a time when the Lord said, shut the book. Shut the book. Don't want that for now. He told Daniel, he told Paul, he told others, John, Patmos, shut the book. Not the time for that. But is it the time coming soon? And will you be able to speak for the Lord? Because the time is coming. Because it's got to come before the end. It's been stopped for now. But it's not the time. It wasn't the time then. But you can see the, can you see the possibility of your, your, your prophecy? Your prayer, your worship song. Can you see the opportunity of your witness? Because that book is always open. The Lamb's book of life is never shut. Never shut. Never. And people are waiting. Some people are waiting for their time because it's an appointed time. It was an appointed time for you. Think back to the day and the hour and the minute and the moment when you found yourself... Jesus said, he said, listen, I've got to go away. I've got a lot of things to do. <laughs> I've got to go away. He said, but I'll send you the comforter. Oh, hallelujah. And, and, and when the, the, you know, he revealed himself at Pentecost and gave us the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the blood got them out of Egypt, then on to Sinai to speak with them there, to make them a kingdom of priests, a people for his name's sake. Everyone a chosen vessel. But they nearly all failed. They took their eyes off the Lord. They didn't believe what Moses said after time. They had no earnest desire for the truth. 
what God has spoken to them. And his word is prophesied to them. Excuse me. What he wanted to do with them. No desire for the future. My, my, my vision is for the future. It is for the future. My vision is seeing the grandkids in here. I mean, we brought one of our grandkids one night to the meeting. She's not been since, but she came. She's about 15 years old. And she was here praising the Lord. She'd never been in church before. She was praising the Lord. She's 50. She's a clever girl, good girl, you know. But uh, we prayed with her at home and all that. But it's not the time yet. But the time is coming. The time is coming for all these grandkids and all these neighbors and all these children. The time is coming. Because God will honor them who honor them. That's his promise. That's his promise. But we, we, we don't give up, see. We don't give up, see. All they could see back there was Moses in the wilderness. God spoke with them, but they were dull of hearing. Let's make, let's make man in our image, God. After our likeness, let them have dominion. And then, you know, our fathers lost that fellowship. The Lord does take great care to bring his sons to perfection. But it's his ways, not ours. And we, we have to rest in that, settle for that sometimes. His ways, not ours. But we in return must take great care of ourselves to hear him and to follow him, to guard our life and again to spend time with him. Yes, we know the power of the blood, but we must go on to perfection. God has promised and he sent his Holy Spirit to help us to get there. We can't do it on our own, but with him, all things are possible. Amen? All things are possible. So show me the all things being possible in your life. We need him. Because the devil knowing now, he only has a short time left. He's come down amongst us. He's here, my friend. He's here. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. That's the isles. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time left. Well, praise the Lord for that. But it's not over yet. Not over yet. Can the devil hear the preachers when he preach? Can the devil read your Bible when you open it? The devil knows his days are numbered. But it won't stop him attacking you. He will continue to be a deceiver. And he's got a lot of flesh to work with, haven't you? Yours and mine. We need to be careful that we guard our hearts. Guard our thoughts. Guard our ways. All the time. All the time. The only title I want to give him is God's servant. It suits me that. God's servant. When evil is at its height, it's nearest its fall. The Bible is a record of God's delivering his people. Over and over you can read these stories and say, that's my God. His purpose stands. There is no Pharaoh that can command you, but his power will be broken. No sea can hold you back, but God will blow with his winds. When Goliath the giant stalks abroad with his challenge, God will put the stone in your sling, but you must fling it. Do not dread or worry or fret the coming of greater opposition. For greater opposition to the people of God only means the triumph supposedly of evil only means it's near the hour of its doom. When we have faith in what God wants us to be and who he wants us to be, when Belshazzar profanes the holy vessels, the handwriting blazes on the wall. Thou art found wanting. He invaded, took everything he wanted, come against everybody. He got everything he wanted. But then he was found wanting. When Haman is at the king's banquet, seeking the blood of the whole people of the Jews, the gallows are prepared for him on his own roof when he gets home. When Jacob lost his son, he said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And the Bible gives us all these answers to life and to difficulties in life. And we can't fail in anything if we trust him. We can't fail. But sometimes you've got to fight the flesh. Sometimes you've got to turn around in the direction you're going. Sometimes you've got to change your mind because you know it's possible too. Even though it seems an impossibility. Nevertheless, all things are possible with the Lord to him that believes. The walk of the Christian faith is the biggest trust known to man. It's not going to the moon. No. 
It's only like setting a banger off for God, that, isn't it? Going to the moon. No, the biggest test is what you're going through now. The biggest trial, the biggest thing in your life is what you're going to be for him. And he's, he, he, he's showing himself strong on your behalf. Uh, the greatest calling is here now. In here, in here the, the devil says the blood's all dried up. There's no life in that now. He's a liar. He's a liar. You plead the precious blood in some instances in your life. And I'll tell you, whoa. <clears throat> God opens up the way. But it's no good you saying, oh, I need to get back there again. I've got this problem. Same problem as I had last week. Same problem as I had the week before. Take it to the Lord and leave it there. Otherwise, it's a lack of faith. Don't you think so? <laughs> Me and you can do it together, the Lord says. Jeez, fly, flies having a look at my sermon here. Me and you can do it together. He takes great care of his sons to bring them to perfection. To per perfection. After this age, he doesn't want any more failure, especially with his own sons. The kingdom and the dispensation of the fullness of times is what you read about in your Bible. That's the next age. It's coming up. That will be given into the hands of God's choicest sons. Saints fully grown, overcomers. They're suffering. They're working. It will work for them. An eternal weight of glory. And glory upon glory. Perfected through suffering, mature through trial, far beyond the reach of corruption and decay when we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. Beyond the realm of greed and selfishness or any such thing, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If this perfection should be lacking in even one saint, then in some future day or in some future age, a wicked one might arise as one did in the past, saying in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars, meaning the sons of God, you and me. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, Isaiah 14. The fact is, the Apostle Paul, realizing the glorious end to the walk of faith, made this amazing statement and many more in the Bible. And just to close this morning, there is a realization of the word of God for you and me. There is a life in the letter. Paul wrote to us, he said, I take pleasure in infirmities. We don't. I take pleasure in reproaches. We don't. I take pleasure in necessities. We don't. I take pleasure in persecutions. We don't. I take pleasure in distresses. We don't. But when we realize it's all for Christ's sake, that's different then. That's different. The realization that he is in charge of my life. He is in control of my life for something higher, greater and better than I can even imagine. When we realize that he's working for that, because it worked for Paul, when I am weak, then I am strong. That takes a little bit of learning. But he said, think it not strange, because it can be. It can be. One time, I mean, there's so much. Even our Lord Jesus Christ learned obedience by the things he suffered. What that means is he came to experience our life so that he knew how to help us because he intercedes on our behalf when we are suffering, when we are in difficulty, when we are in danger. He knows how to go about all this and he will do it for us. Well, you might say, oh, he's checking his time about it. Well, that, he's, still, he's still in charge. He's still got a purpose. For every day, he becomes the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Hebrews 5. And finally in closing, for it became him for whom are all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Oh, I weep sometimes because when you read, sing the hymns, because you, you, you know he did it for you. And the reality of that 
it's just a power in your spirit. It's just a wonder. It's a love that we're looking for. And it's just so wonderful. Perfection is very closely connected with suffering. For we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. The crowning with glory and honor came after the suffering. Not without it. His suffering affords our salvation. He wants us to trust him in all things. And we've come here this morning to hear again that it's possible to trust him. Because if he says it's for us, and, and we, we mustn't forget that when we walk out of here. None of us. I tell you, he's marvellous, isn't he? He's wonderful. And he wants to prove himself in your life as well as mine.